Well, a new movement, the South African Movement, has been launched today. The movement by concerned citizens aims for uh, aims form a people's summit, which uh, will interrogate the trajectory South Africa has taken since the dawn of democracy. For more on this, uh, we are joined now by the convener, Soli Moeng. He's here with us in studio. The first thing that I saw um, about this movement is that it's not a political party. No. So, uh, but you're going to be on the ballot paper? Hope? No. No. All right. So just explain to us exactly what this will be doing for citizens. Look, everyone or many people, many egos, yeah. I'm not saying it in a bad way, <laughs> think they have the answer yeah. to save South Africa. Mm. They form political parties. They think they're going to be the next best thing. Yeah. And we have people in the political sphere, but also on the civil society movement side. So there are lots of parallels running. Okay. Everyone thinking they have the answer. Now we said, and, and, and we've been waiting for too long for politicians, for people going into party, mm. into, into elected politics, mm. to come back with, to us with answers. Mm. We've given a lot of power over 30 years. It's going to be 30, next 30 years to politicians. Now the United South Africa movement aims to say, to bring the people of South Africa together, to say it's enough. We've given the tail, the political tail, too much time to work the dog. Let us get together as the people of South Africa, irrespective of what color you, you were, to decide what, com what kind of country you want. So we're not looking for another savior to say, I'm going to vote for me, I'm going to go in there and solve the, the, th the thing is the more political parties we have in the space, the, 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 small, the smaller the slice they're going to get, the ANC is going to remain the big pie. So w w there's something yeah. wrong with the system. South Africa is way to end today because there has been systemic damage to everything, to the democratic institutions that we established at the dawn of our democracy, SOE is everything. We are, we, I mean, I could go, I don't want to sit here and mention the litany of problems. So we're saying, let us rethink, including the presidency. There's too much power in the office of the presidency. Constitutionally enshrined, but also if you look at the current president, he's drawn on a lot of powers into his office. Yeah. Now, somebody who is charming, who speaks good English, is, becomes president next year, they look at all these powers and say, damn, I'm not giving this away. <laughs> it's enough. Yeah. So we, the people, must get together mm. ahead of the next elections mm. and hold a summit mm. that's going to come out with a, a list of strong resolutions mm. to those who have the ambition to go into politics. Mm. to say whatever you do once you cross the electoral line these are the things that the changes what you that you want mm. the problems in south africa that to find the solutions to our problems it's not a matter of replacing cyril with johnny or johnny mm. with mahoud or whatever mm. Mm. it's about what do you want whoever wins to go in there yeah to do once again and actually we mustn't have a situation where there's too much power in the in the in the hands of one person it's mm. too much it's we need to have we are ir ir irrevocably into an uh, coalition era in, in, yeah. in our politics why can't we have a multi-party mm. system where there's a multi-party council that leads South Africa with a president who doesn't have power who's yeah. elected say every, every 12 months or something mm. but the multi-party system governs South yeah. Africa. So we can't go in with the same system. Yeah. So that would mean the entire electoral system would have to be changed and even the bill would have to be re-looked at which already uh, is being questioned by a lot of civil society organizations, the amendment bill that the president signed last week. Right. So TUSAM, that's what you call yourselves. This is what you, your role would be to host the summit that will tell pol dif different politicians exactly what South Africans want. TUSAM is not going to tell anybody what to do. Okay. TUSAM is convening a platform for TUSAM, and we've had uh, soft launches of TUSAM over the past two weeks. Mm. We've spoken to political parties in the opposition. We've written to them in parliament. We've spoken to a multi-stakeholder grouping of civil society movements and uh, activists. We're saying, let's get together as the people. We need people, the youth to be represented, the people in rural areas to be represented, other sectors of society to come together and say, what kind of country do you want? We mm. have what lessons have we learned from the past 30 years? And we must come out there with a charter that says this and this and this must change. And we yeah. realize that not everything is going to be able to be changed immediately. Yes. There will be medium, me, imme, immediate term, middle term, or me, and, long and long term changes. Yeah. For instance, there will have to be constitutional changes. If we want to change, for instance, the powers allocated to the presidency, we can't keep trying the same tools over and over again and expect mm. different outcomes. Something has to give. Yeah. So um, now, you know, let me go back to the point that you made a little earlier to say that our electoral system as a whole has to change. Um, the IEC, and I keep asking this question to people who say that, say, say that it needs about 18 months 
uh, to be able to prepare for elections. So already it might be delayed because there are people who want to take the amendment bill to court, right? So mm -hmm. constitutional court to be re-looked at. Yes. So already it looks like the election might have to be delayed. It is stipulated in the constitution that that can happen um, as long as it happens within the same year. So if the electoral system changes, does that not mean that constitutionally we'll be uh, stuck with the electorate not voting possibly next year and waiting another few months? Look, first of all, this whole thing is not just about the Electoral Act. It's the one of the changes that must change, well, yeah. that must happen. Yeah. Secondly, the IEC is the same IEC, so-called independent, which I'm not sure it is, is independent, <laughs> that tried to push for the elections to be stopped in 2021. We know, and we can pretend all we want, that the, a the ANC controls the IEC. Many of those people at the head of the IEC are deployees. We need to create more buffer between the institutions of democracy and any political party, irrespective of who they are. So this IEC will take instructions from the political masters. They will try and play the game. We need to get to a point where even this is changed. We need to say to the people of South Africa, what kind of independent, right now we don't have it, commission do you want for elections? Mm -hmm. What kind of education system? What kind of uh, um, foreign policy do you want? What kind of position do you want for South Africa in the mm. world? Yeah, just very quickly, do you still believe, though, really, that the IEC is slanted towards the ruling party, especially after you know seeing the trajectory of how the electorate or elections, the results of the elections would come out? I mean, you saw um, democracy coming at play back in 2021, where coalition governments came on because the um, IEC was the one that reflected that the electorate shrunk, people didn't come out to vote, the ANC lost some uh, municipalities. So do you really still think that they still slanted towards that? Uh, I have spoke, I speak to a lot of people, <laughs> and I, in, including in the IEC, who have yeah. told me stuff that is not out there. Okay. Okay. So I think that we, we need to get to a point where South Africa's fate does not rest on the goodwill or good health of any individual. Mm. The fact is, you might have somebody who runs the IEC who goes in there to say, we, I work for the people of South Africa, but it's still vulnerable to political control. So we need to look at the systemic changes that must happen around this IEC and other institutions of democracy. Yeah. Look at the criminal justice system. Look at the, everybody looked at Bash Shamila Baitohi coming in and she hasn't touched all these sensitive people. Okay, everybody's going running, running around the Guptas, the Guptas, they were excited to go after the best term because he's an easy target. Somebody like Dutuzani Zuma, who was a core partner of the Gupta enterprise, comes yeah. in and going, come in and comes in and out of South Africa, even, even, he's, he's even telling the world that he's going to become the next president. Yeah. It seems like this selective prosecutorial ap act, 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 mm. activity or culture in there. Yeah. So the system, we're looking at South Africa as a whole, not as just one thing, to say okay. we've tried these things that we have for not 30 years, something, something has to change. Okay. And the people must determine that, not the political past. We're not yeah. saying waiting for sorry to say, yeah, vote for me, I'm going to do it mm. for you. No, no, no. Mm. We must say once you go in there, these are the what things you that want. you want to change. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming into studio and speaking to us. That was Soli Moeng uh, from the newly launched United South Africa Movement.